Well, as we began in this study guide, it, it has a story, and I'll just share the story as we begin. It talks about a gentleman by the name of Bill. Um, Bill uh, was an alcoholic, had an alcohol problem. And so over a period of about three years, he lost his family, his job, his home. Uh, he, was, he was on the street. Hmm. And, um, and so one, one day he was, whatever money he did, did receive, he was in the bar and he was drinking. He stumbled out of a bar one evening, and there was around Christmas time, and there was a group of people, carolers. They were singing the song, Joy to the World, standing over on the sidewalk. Wow. And so he stopped, and he was listening. A lady of one of the, one of the ladies singing, she walked over to him, came out of the group, walked over to him and looked at him and wished him a Merry Christmas. And then she said, I want God to bless you. God loves you very much. Well, that impacted Bill for the next few days. Uh, he thought about those words, that God loves you very much. Finally, in the downtown area where he was living in homeless shelters and on the street, he went to a local church, mm. and he asked the pastor, he said, he told the little story I just shared, and he said, I have been troubled about that, that God loves me very much, and can you help me with that? Why is this, why does this keep you know, still in my mind so much, and I'm so troubled? And the pastor said, well, that's God's through the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Speaking to your heart, to your life, God wants you to come and accept him so he can mm. help you overcome the difficulties in your life and you can live a life of peace and joy and also have an eternal relationship with him. Wow. And, um, you know, and, that, and Sean, that, that leads us really to the first question. Okay, let's take a look at it. Which says, just before Jesus returned to heaven, whom did Jesus promise to send to his disciples? And when it says return to heaven, it's, you know, Jesus, as we know, was born on this earth, lived, yep. you know, as a baby, he grew, and then after his death, resurrection, he ascended back to heaven. And just before he returned to heaven, this question states, whom did Jesus promise to send to his disciples? John 14, 16, and 17. Why don't you, uh, if okay. you don't mind, uh, read nope. those John scriptures. 14, verse 16, Jesus is speaking. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Hmm. Profound. Yeah, it is. Dwell with you forever and will be in you. Do you know what I like about this? It says, look, Here's the situation. Jesus is about to leave and, and go back to heaven. He's just spent all this time with his disciples. They've become really close. They recognize who he is, and they haven't seen the cross yet at this point, but that's about to happen, and Jesus is getting them ready for the moment that he actually leaves. And at the same time, he says, look, you're not going to be on your own. I'm going to send you another helper, which tells you that Jesus himself is a helper. That he's the helper. Right. That he'd healed people. He'd restored the blind, people could walk, he'd raised the dead, he'd met the needs of mankind for those three years he was here on this earth. Right. So he says, you're not going to be on your own, and I'm going to send another helper that he may abide with you forever. Hmm. So there's never going to be a moment. I mean, God's deepest desire is to have us back in his presence. Sin made that a problem. Jesus solves that problem. He atones for our sins. He makes us right with God. And he comes in our direction, becomes one of us, and then to suddenly lose him. And he's going to go back to heaven. He says, relax. I'm never going to leave you again. Uh, Hebrews 13, verse 5, God's promise is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But how can it be? You know, Jesus rose from the dead a physical human being. We know that because in Luke's gospel, he says, look, touch me, handle me. See, I still have a body. I'm not some kind of spook or spirit. And he ate some food in front of them. And then he left in physical form. And the angels in Acts say that same Jesus is coming back. So Jesus is forever one of us. Mm -hmm. So how's he with us? Well, he's gone physically. It's the Holy Spirit. That's what I get from here. Yeah, very, very powerful. And, and I like the portion of the verse that says, he dwells with you. And he lives in you. Wow. That, that, that means that if he dwells with me, it's like living in my home. He's, mm -hmm. he's with me wherever I'm at. If I'm walking, I, I always like the analogy that I'm surrounded by the presence of God. That means he walks before me, behind me, and beside me. In other words, I'm protected by him. I'm in his presence. And by protected, it's not in the sense of, yeah, he does watch over us. 
but it's in the sense that I'm in his, I'm continually in his presence, but living in me, you know, that, that, that's a harder one for us to grasp, but, um, and maybe a little bit later, there's a question or two on this, but you know, he yeah. lives within the heart and within well, the mind, you know. I look at the end game in the book of Revelation. It says that God takes up residence with us forever. I will dwell with my people forever. That's been his deepest desire to dwell with us. But even before that, and I don't know if this comes up in the guide or not, he dwells with us through the presence of his Holy Spirit. That's, that It says here he dwells with you. That's what God is aiming for, is to dwell with us again. And, um, and, and it's like... Well, in one place, Paul calls the Holy Spirit the earnest or the down payment. This is a little down payment of what's going to be our eternal reality. He's with us now through the Holy Spirit because he's literally going to be physically with us through all eternity one day. 